Hey everybody, this is hey. episode 71 of the Adventures hey. in Odyssey podcast. I'm Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. Hey. It's the first letter of the alphabet, I'm Victoria. Yes, so now, tonight, we join our heroes as they review episode 772. Pinocchio. Will they make it out alive? The Tale of a Foolish Puppet Part 2. I, I'm not even doing that because it's Halloween today, but I realize that when you made a spooky voice, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. What else oh, are we yeah. reviewing, Victoria? I keep on forgetting it's Halloween today. Like, there's candy laying around. I'm like, why is there candy? This is great. And I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> I wish there's candy laying around my house. What a else Halloween are we reviewing? Halloween special came out for a series I like today, and I'm like, oh, okay. Why is it Halloween themed? I'd, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else are we reviewing today, Victoria? Miss Taken for Good. Yes. The lady who was taken for good. Yes. So, first, episode 772, Pinocchio, part two, written by Dave Arnold. What happens, Victoria? So, in this episode, camera. just as I predicted, uh, Jay, I mean, Pinocchio, uh gets into some shenanigans. He gets led to Bernard. So let's just take a moment. Bernard's okay. back! Oh. Bernard, Dave Madden had his voice in the episode. Oh. Even though it was a past clip, we heard Bernard. I dropped my fork and I started stuttering and then I got yelled at because I was at the table. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. News, before we begin. So, uh, I said this in the part one review, but I want to say this at the beginning of an episode just to make sure that it's it's heard. So, in the documentary for the last episode, <clears throat> in a Q&A session, news. Nathan Hubler said, uh, um, Jana Whitaker will return to the show at some point, definitely. What? Hey, news. Yes. Wait, I think I knew that. Yeah, we talked about this last time. Yeah. But I just want to put it in a separate news thing at the beginning of another episode. And he also said, at least some OAC episodes will be publicly available in the foreseeable future, just like the Dropbox is right now. Oh! Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. So, in this episode... Uh, Bernard... Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy, I'm sorry. It's just Just, very just go important. through the summary and then we can talk about it. Okay. So it's so hard though. Pinocchio gets goes to the Isle of Pear. Leisure. Land of Leisure. Yeah, Land of Leisure. And so there he meets Vance. And He's on the Island of Misfit Toys. Toys. It's funny because he is a misfit. They turn into donkeys. He is a misfit nice toy. Um uh, No, he's a foolish toy. Uh, uh, so then stuff happens. He meets Bernard. Uh, Edwin's not in this. One. Yeah. He's okay, majorly yeah. And then in this he, one. he runs into Edwin. He works as a performer. Heck yeah. And then he meets a friendly seagull, played by Jess Harnell, who helps him find his dad at the bottom of the water or whatever. The bottom the of whale. the water. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom of the water <laughs> in the whale. Good <laughs> words use, Victoria. Thank you. And then they get out and he turns into a human. Do you Stuff think that happens. Jonah was part of the inspiration for Pinocchio? I have sp- always thought that before. That makes I sense. Thought, I thought everyone assumed that. Yeah, well, I, I've thought that before. It just kind of came back to me now. Anyways, okay. Uh, so Because, like, Jonah disobeyed God. He ended up in a whale. Pinocchio disobeyed everyone. He ended up in a whale. Well, I mean, it's more of Geppetto who ended up in the whale, honestly. Pinocchio first. ended up in the whale in the end. Shut up, Devin. So, uh, first, and now, community corrections. On our previous episode, uh, apparently one AIO actually one-upped us on French for once, because apparently, la vache is actually a French exclam- exclamatory uh, euphemism that is yeah, really used. Yeah, I found used. this out, uh, well... Looking on Tumblr at a French show I like. So, congratulations, AIO. It's one French point for you and a lot more for us. So, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> this we're, has we're been still winning, but... Community Corrections. Oh, sorry. This has been 
corrections. <laughs> the is hand. Uh, what I should say. Well, on the spot finger. Why is it the on the spot hand? Because transition. Ah. I was like, that's not from Night Vale. Oh, um, why would it be for? Oh. Because the corrections thing is from Night Vale. Oh. oh. Which I'm uh, going to see tonight. <gasps> look at my. <laughs> Devin, Devin, come back here. I should have been wearing this the whole time. I'm going Devin. to live Night Vale show tonight, and my I got my lab coat all spoofed out for it. Because look, I got the the rest there. And check out the back. Can you see it? Well, on the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got back, Devin. Thank now you, baby. Speaking of back. back, let's get back to the review. Yeah, let's talk okay. about the review. <clears throat> so, so, um, I, I kind of was being a little tongue in cheek about this last when we reviewed part one since I'd already heard part two, but I was pretending I hadn't heard part one. So let me get this straight. I was pretending I hadn't heard actually I think I blatantly said I'd heard part two already. Yeah, and I did I didn't know I did as well that he end. had heard part one until two. after or part two until after we recorded part one. He well, never until told me. Most of the way through. You wait, you weren't done it? No, no, I mean, you found out partway through the recording. Oh, We started right, freaking yeah. about about Bernard during the recording, but not saying Bernard. Yeah. So anyway, so, yeah. Surprise! So let me get Bernard. this straight. Now that I can talk about it, Geppetto has been swallowed by a sea monster, and Pinocchio believes there's a chance he may still be alive. And so the blue sprite's idea for him to be good is to now go to school. And not to save Geppetto. She is as useless here as she is in Once Upon a Time. <laughs> so, like, he was yeah. at the ocean, and, like, the whale's, like, right there. It's like, he may be alive, but only if you hurry. Pinocchio, I need you to do the right thing. Go. Go to school. Get an education. Get a degree. Do your four years. You know, join a four... Get a 401k. Get married. Have some get puppet children. And then come back and save Geppetto. <laughs> well, like, priorities, definitely. Obviously. In this economy, you know, you have to make a choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did think about that, too. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, because last time when we were talking about predictions, I was like, my prediction is obviously he has to save Geppetto now. Because anything else would be absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, yeah, I was being yeah. pretty tongue-in-cheek on the last hey, video. Hey, did you do your homework and research what the original Pinocchio is I like? I found out from the OAC stuff that you never read, oh. actually. So we'll get there at the end. Okay. But why... Uh, wait, did he save his father right after he found out? I don't know what the order of stuff happened. I just found out a couple different elements. Well, that's what That's what I want to find out. Well, you can read the original story then, Victoria. Fine. Um, <clears throat> I want to know how they got Vance King to be in a kids' radio production about wisdom. I want to know how they got Vance too. I want to know how they got lots of these people. Um, I find it still funny how Rue the Day has become so cemented into Jay's writing, like for everything. It's I find it weird that that's Wait, like. When did the he thing that's say that? On. Sorry, they said when it once he... in the episode. Oh, I missed that. Someone said it to him. Oh. They're like, you will rue the day. They were like, um, okay. Uh, I was honestly, I was pretty disappointed that they cast Wally Hagler as the guy who's trafficking boys away to turn them into donkey slaves. Like, can we stop yeah. typecasting Wally Hagler like this? 2K15, please. I think it's about time that we, you know, stop villainizing him. Album 53 was a long time ago. I think it's about time that... You know, it's like this development sets in where we stop making uh, him into the bad guy. Every dude, time. in the original version, Geppetto does get imprisoned because Pinocchio claims that he hurt him or something like that. Well, uh, he did, you know, drive chisel into his flesh over and over. Well, he doesn't have flesh, Devin. He's wood. Exactly. So, um, interesting, because I was kind of confused about this. Turns out that the Toyland song from Babes in Toyland is actually open source because it is very old. Because he started singing it, and I was like... So I looked it up, and yes, it's is, It's a very old song. So it is open source now. So so I'm looking <clears> at the original story. Well, Pinocchio, I'll say some stuff about it, too. Don't say stuff I'm going to say. Pinocchio goes to the marionette place that looks like it happens first. 
and afterwards he comes back, he meets the fox and cat, blah, 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 he meets the blue fairy, uh, third doctor is the ghost of the talking cricket, what's the doctor doing in this? Do you say the third doctor? It's, that's, it's a, the third doctor what is the John ghost Pertwee of the talking cricket. What was John Pertwee doing in Pinocchio? I don't know, maybe he got bored one day. It was one of those weird alt dimension AU episodes. Uh... Blah, blah, blah. It looks like they... Oh, the golden coin tree is in the original story. That's interesting. Uh, Oh, there are pigeons also. And this looks like it's actually very... Similar to the episode? Very similar to the episode. Um, Which is what I figured, honestly. I figured this was probably more similar than Disney's version was. Oh, the fairy dies, apparently. Oh, that didn't happen in the Disney version. <laughs> While you're looking, well, I'll keep saying more things. So uh, okay. they had a reference to Mr. Ed. And I was like, ah, it's funny, because Alan Young. And then, yeah, Bernard came in. I, I could not breathe. Like, Devin! I was, I was Devin! Just, yes. Okay, Pinocchio finds out that Geppetto's followed by a whale. He meets the fairy, who tells him... As long as he acts good and goes to school, she'll turn him into a real boy. I'm done. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is, this is the order. This is like, other than the marionette thing, that's like the first thing that happens. Other than that, you make that the first thing. Yeah, and Stromboli it's, never happened in this at all, but. No, the, the marionette thing was the theater thing. The circus? Yeah. Well, I was wondering about, but I, I thought, okay, I mean, we'll get there in the notes, but I thought it was great. So other I thought, than that, this was the right order. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, like I was complaining. I was complaining in the first part sense. about how disordered all over the place the stories were like, blah, 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 but they were actually following the original. That okay, so anyway, so, so Bernard shows up and I could not breathe for a while. Like I was just frozen in shock. I'm Same. like, okay. So, and Victoria and I talked about this before, this raises a lot of questions. Mainly, if they were going to put Dave Madden's voice in an OAC episode between May and August of this year, why would they not slip it into BTV instead of this random kids radio And even if they one? didn't, like, if they wanted to keep him in this and they didn't want to put him in BTV, that's fine. But why not at least make some note of like, oh, with your new host or something like that. Yeah. And like mention, we... allude to like Bernard's not there. I know it's a TV series, BTV, and like we've only heard about like nine episodes of BTV or something like that. So like if Bernard did stop being the host quite a while back, they wouldn't need to bring it up. But still, as we don't get to listen to those, it would be nice for the listeners to be able to hear something like that. Yeah. To so just acknowledge it. Yeah, I was going to work my way around to that, but we figured that's the most likely explanation in terms of things that actually fit with what we have. Because the weird thing about him showing up in the Kids Radio episode is that that means that Bernard recorded lines for Kids Radio, which would mean he is still alive and he's still around Odyssey, but he wasn't on BTV and no explanation was given, which makes Devin. even less sense than it did before. So we realized that the most likely thing was that, yeah, he's... No longer the host of BTV, he retired, maybe because he's old, but that happened a, cu a while back in terms of BTV episodes, so they already made that whole transition thing, and so that's why it wasn't addressed in this episode of BTV, because Connie had already been hosting it for a while now, but you know, he's still able to come in and record two lines for uh, for kids radio, and I'm, I love mm -hmm. that. You must have been a joy to have around as a child line from uh, was, Suspicious Minds. Okay, he was insulting Vance, like... Not only does Bernard come back, he comes back with sass, which is two points, and then he comes back to insult Vance, that is three points, plus the fact that Bernard amplified to a bazillion. I mm. Also, this means we still have people to wash windows, Devin. Yeah, Devin. yeah we can see out of the windows again. We can see clearly now Bernard is back. And, uh, and then immediately after that, Edwin shows up. I was like, things are going haywire I around. I was what's... listening. I'm like, this is the best day of my life. I was like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, Jay is going to be Daring Do. I was like, that's a weird crossover, but okay. I can roll with that. You don't say that as I take a drink of water. <laughs> um, 
I assume that Jay's like, you really like me, line to the audience uh, was, in the circus. That was funny. Was another reference to uh, the Oscar speech by Sally Field, just like we had in So Blissly Devoted, which we talked about in I, January. I like... I listened to that. I'm like, I get that reference because so blissfully devoted. Devin explained it to me. References are so to not suck. References are so not to suck. And then they're like taking the plunge. And I was like, they said it. Except I know. this is the OAC. So. That's exactly how I reacted. I was like, they said it. They said it for the wrong album. Wait, what? <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, wait a minute. This is the wrong thing. What the heck? Uh, yeah. And then Sean Connery showed up. Not, entire, not entirely sure he actually served a purpose. Uh, which one was Sean Connery? I, the pigeon? I think so. Yeah. No, no, one no. The Sean pigeon was part. Elvis. Sorry. No, yeah. The, the pigeon was Jess Harnell. Sean yeah. Connery was uh, before that. We, yeah, that was, was something weird. Else. It was a seagull or something. Yeah. Um, no, uh, anyway, so that sequel. happens. And it's like, man, they made Geppetto so incredibly unlikable. I know, right? His his voice feels like it's sucking my soul out of my ears <laughs> listening to him. Wow. I've never heard a more milk wow. toast voice in my life. Isn't that the guy that Will wanted to get on the show? No, 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 no. That was someone. No, the guy he wanted to get on the show was the original voice of Pinocchio. From Disney. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. And it led to the inspiration of doing a Pinocchio episode. But no, that guy didn't appear. I'm not sure he's alive still. <clears throat> uh, when Pinocchio was yelling, he's like, I have skin and pain. And it made me think of Bipper right away. <laughs> I was like, Gravity Falls right there. Like, when he's... My favorite moment in all his... of sock opera is still like when he walks over to the drawer and he just sticks like... his arm in the drawer and he starts banging the drawer against his arm and he's just like, "Wow!" And what does he What does he say in that part? I don't, I don't know. know. Something is about how long it's been since he's occupied a, a no, human no, body. No, that was in the attic. And he's like, "Wow, pain sure is fun," or something like that. He takes his arm out, and they're like forks sticking in his arm. And then I'm like, "Dipper, no." Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description, I guess, maybe with a timestamp if I kind of can't find the exact scene, just so you guys know what we're talking about. But I, I don't think there's a scene strictly of that on YouTube. Well, I'll find. I'll put a timestamp with the link down in the description. Either way, um, so yeah, when Pinocchio was like, "I have skin and pain," that's immediately what I thought of. And, you know, this story really did pull together more in the end than it did before. Like, I feel like the last scene was really good. And mm -hmm. the symbolism, which I'm assuming is probably in the originals where that came from, reminded me a lot of Pilgrim's Progress in terms of, like, there's your old body that you've, like, shed off and put behind you now and stuff like that. It felt very Pilgrim's Progress. And you're like, why didn't Disney have this? Uh, Dave Mann got crediting at the end of the episode. Um... And Edwin... It should have been dedicated to Dave Madden. It should have been. Uh, Edwin Blacker just hit 20 non-retrospective episodes with this one. So if you count this as an appearance of his character, which I am, he just finally became a major character on the show. Woo! Edwin! Everyone's becoming a major character now, I know. It's been happening way. epidemically lately. Like, apparently, I think, like, three characters just became major ones. More than that, I think. Advance just became a minor one, too. <clears throat> or Ooh, just okay, I have a lot the to say about Vance. Sorry? I have a lot to say about Oh, we'll Vance. get there. We'll get there. Okay, and then so, documentary, the uh, the web documentary. We first see a marionettist talk about his craft. Uh, then we have a talk with Whit Hertford, voice of Jay, along with this adorable clip of Lil Him in McGee and Me. I'll flash that on the screen. Right now, a picture of him right now. Do, what did... What, okay, Devin sent me a screenshot of Wit as from like McGee and me, and I've only seen one episode and I was really little, but I was able to remember who he was like a couple of years ago when I found out he was on it. Um, and so Devin sent me a picture and I was just like, Bay. And then Devin's just like, even with the glasses, and I was just like, Bay. <laughs> so Wit, meaning Jay. Because uh, that's his name, which makes it confusing talking about his as an actor. You know, that's what, how I can remember what his name is, though. That's so, the only uh, reason I remember. 
Wit J talks about how he loves AIO recording because it's in the same booth and stuff, which lets him ad lib and bounce off the actors. And he says that he would love to be J for 20 more years. Which I thought Victoria would happen about. Can we interview him? <laughs> and then, uh, maybe. Who knows? Oh, that would be so amazing. Uh, surprisingly, we have a storytelling time with Adam Young, a.k.a. Owl City, where he talks about things that I he would have Adam changed Young. in his past if he I could Owl City. in terms of wisdom and stuff. Um, and then we cut back to the puppeteer and see an excerpt of his performance of Tom Sawyer. And then another little mini sermon. They have from... the part with like the paint and the fence because that's like the only part I know from Tom Sawyer at that end, he rides, like, a raft down the bayou or something. Yeah, Huckleberry Finn and all that. Yeah. Uh, then another little mini-sermon from Danny Huerta, who's talked before on the OAC things. He was the one who talked about the soccer balls, I think. Um, I remember that. About wisdom. Well, you remember me talking about that. Have you ever watched a single one of the documentaries before? Yes, the, I watched one, the, I think. Oh, very good. Um, I watched I watched the Drake the Cosmic Copper one. Ah. That's the only one I've seen, but I've seen it, and that's all that counts. So we talked about wisdom, and then finally there was a couple bloopers from Bob's whole adventure in being a puppet for this entire episode. Um, so, in the extended web link stuff, so to expand on our surprise last time over Pinocchio being a series of articles, so... The story was actually a series of stories that Collodi wrote for an Italian kids magazine in 1881, and the first 35 installments were stuck together to create The Adventures of Pinocchio. Uh, wow, the 35. Wow. The original had Pinocchio kill the cricket with a hammer, uh, the fox and the cat tried to kill Pinocchio by hanging him from a tree, and originally that's how the story was supposed to end at the end of episode 15, where Pinocchio died by hanging because of his poor choices. But the publishers wanted a longer story, so the Blue Fairy was invented to get Pinocchio down from the tree and offer him a, ch a chance at redemption through boyhood. Holy crap, that could have been really dark! I know, they literally hung him by the neck till dead, or just till rot. I think rot. I saw a picture of that too I when guess. I was... And that's how it was supposed to end! That was going to be the end to the story, and the publisher what was lesson like, is that? Um, it's supposed to treat kids, like, act badly, and then a fox and a mouse, will, or a fox and a cat, will hang you. anthropomorphic fox and cat will come and kill you. Yes, that was the lesson. It's just like, where is it, the Philippines, where they teach you that Santa Claus, if you're naughty, comes and eats your toes? <laughs> what? I know I've told you about that before. I, I know, but I forgot. Yeah, I know. It's a wonderful thing to remember. Um, That's so weird. And there was also a crossword puzzle for the episodes. And beside it had a picture of Bernard. And there was like a speech bubble with the thing that he said about the episode too. Something about like, something about Jay and Pinocchio and a squeegee that was Bernard-like. And it was like, ah, oh, they even acknowledged oh. like that Bernard was in the episode by having him on the crossword. And it was like... So. It, it means so much to me. I love how it was like, something Bernard-like. Like... like uh, Jay and Bernard, or Jay and Pinocchio and a squeegee. It was something about, yeah, Pinocchio and a squeegee. So, final thoughts on the episode. I want to talk about Vance first. So, Vance, I know, I know I'm just repeating myself with, like, all this stuff with Jay and Vance, probably, but I don't care by this point, because it, it's important to me. Well, we are going to talk about it in a second, too, because we're about to do, uh... Well, mistaken for we're good, in, remember. We're going to be talking about Mistaken for Good, but I want to talk about things like Pinocchio related. Well, yeah, that's right. Like, even, even in this parallel universe, like, apparently he can't get away from him. It just really bothers me. That they're, like, and, intrinsically tied together? That it's kismet? Yeah, basically, it's like, oh, we need to get a part for someone to play who's going to, like, lure Pinocchio into doing all these bad things. Let's ask Vance if he wants to act alongside Jay. Like, we already know... <laughs> Jay is not comfortable. He's not comfortable being around Vance. He doesn't like being around Vance and having him like use him and stuff. Hmm. So like, why would why would they do this casting choice? I know by that like isn't a good question. I'm I mean like I'm I know why they did it as like Odyssey thing because it lines up really well. But as like a kids radio production, if you think about the people acting as these characters, which I like that's to do. Like, which I do also, and like that's really 
twisted if you think about it. It is. Yeah, it is odd. Like... Imagine how uncomfortable that would make Jay. Like, I assume they do practices of this before. So, like... Which still, of course, raises the even larger question of how they got fans to do this once again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, there's always questions like that. Maybe it was part of his restricted grounding stuff. They used to always get Rusty to be in kids' (laughs) radio. How did they do that? I I never But Vance is a lot worse. Yeah, I know. And, like... It's... I don't know. It just makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It is weird. Because, like, they, they have such an unhealthy relationship, and it really, really bothers me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. So, like, plot-wise, it's really, really interesting. But I want to see them move forward and do other stuff with it. They have started doing that, though. They have acknowledged... Yes. Basically, blatantly, how uncomfortable Jay is around Vance in Mistaken for Good. Now we're going to get there you, soon. Yeah, we're going to review that one next. Um, and then in uh, mm-hmm. 30 Jay's Hat September, he talks about how uncomfortable he is just like putting on this facade and stuff that has to do with like Vance and everyone. That part is just logical <laughs> assumption, basically. Do you agree? I agree. Do you agree? I agree. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I, I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it I, is weird that Wit would do that because you should know. I mean, like I said, I, you may be able to work around the question of how Vance did it in general by saying that he was, like, in trouble for ties that bind stuff. And so... Yeah, like, like his, community service. Yeah, so his mother like made that. him help out with it kind of thing. Mother, may I? But the fact that they would cast him like that it was weird. Unless, I don't know, maybe they thought it would be some kind of weird self-realization or healing process for one or either of them to kind of step back and see the relationship as a narrative in front of them. It's like a role-playing thing where they're role-playing themselves written out in front of them. Maybe. And like, I don't know. Going going into part two because of, like, Devin and I, obviously, as you can tell, and we basically stated... We don't know the original order of all the Pinocchio events. But we do now, so, sort of. Yeah, because we were kind of going by the Disney version, I just kind of assumed that they mm. wouldn't go to the Land of Leisure. So um, when they did, like, I was really, really hoping, even though it would be kind of weird, I was hoping that Barrett would be the person who mm. tries to, like, lead Jay away. Well, I was know it we doesn't. Heard from Barrett. Yeah, I know. It's weird. But, like, for a couple of reasons. One, we haven't heard from Barrett in a while. I really like Barrett. Two, it wouldn't be Vance. So, like, do you understand why I would want it to be Barrett, though? It doesn't really make sense narratively or, like, narrationly, whatever. But it would Barrett last make appeared sense. in Repent After Me, album yeah. 57. So it was like before the OAC even started is the last time Bear showed up. Maybe he's in the same place Miss Adelaide is. <laughs> you dared question the order of things. But like it wouldn't make that much sense for Barrett to be the character if you try to look at the parallel they were trying to go with. But if you just take like, okay, uh, the, we need a young male character who's about the same age as Jay oh, how about Barrett? Why don't we use Barrett? And it's just like, okay, um, because, yeah, if I was Jay, I would be so uncomfortable having Vance play alongside me in that role. Like, yeah. Because it's it's not like Jay hasn't realized what Vance does. Mm -hmm. He has. And if he hadn't before, he definitely does in Mistaken for Good. (laughs) Like, yeah, that's basically a turning point. Episode well, I think he definitely did already. It's clear from the beginning yeah. of Mistaken for Good that he already knew that. We'll get to that very soon. And and also, like, if you look at, like, Groundhog J, like... Did you choose Mistaken for Good to go with this for this reason? Or did I you just... told you I didn't... I chose uh, them before oh. I found out... Good choosing, Jay Victoria. Was... Thank you. Two months of J. So, because we don't have enough month-related J-title episodes. Exactly. Um, where was I? What was I saying? Uh, in Groundhog Day, he says to Priscilla, like, Roti P, 
um, how uncomfortable he is, like, with all the things that, all the things that uh, Vance makes him do, and, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. So, final rating for the episode, then. Five stars. I really enjoyed it. Just everything about it. The music was really, really, really good. I really, really enjoyed the music. Oh, I was going to say, I forgot to write it down, but because I thought, like, oh, they kind of missed out on Stromboli at the beginning. I was like, oh, I guess that was the circus thing. But the weird thing is <clears throat> he did the circus as a donkey in this one instead of Stromboli as a puppet. And the fact that he was a puppet is was, like, a really integral thing because it was all about, like, yeah. not having strings and being free and stuff like that as I a puppet. I have no strings, but now I'm free. Ultron. And we're quoting from Ultron, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good Marvel you. quoting, Victoria. What? I said good Marvel quoting. Thank you. Same um, to you. So, yeah, it, it feels like it kind of changes the whole, like, narrative moral intent of, like, the lesson behind the whole experience. So, I don't know. But anyway, so final thoughts. So, you give yours. Um, yeah, I still, like, it grew on me more at the end and in the second part, especially now that I know that the whole bizarre, like, hodgepodge structure was actually, like, the original structure. That makes it a lot better. Yeah, but... Because you have to respect them for sticking to the actual story when they say they're not when they say they're going to instead of just diverging to the disney version yeah can i can i change my rating to 4.9 yes because of the vance thing because it really bothers me yeah that's um, not their fault i still like i liked it more than after part one but it's still not a huge fan of it i i mean if it's 3.7 i just i just had a really fun time listening to it I like it's when three, Odyssey does three fairy point five. tale, three point five. Fairy tale things for the most part. Okay, hate on me, however you will, but I enjoy the Bethany Shepherd. I know fairy you do. <laughs> I don't know why. So yeah, I I don't know what it. It just there's something that feels kind of off juvenile i mean not oh, even definitely not even that yes. i mean obviously i mean obviously it's juvenile but in a way that just didn't like oh it's so cute and innocent and quirky like it it was not innocent he killed jimmy <laughs> uh well he didn't though but apparently, apparently the original one so apparently yeah. the original one was gonna be way darker because wooten came back at the end what because wooten came back at the end of the episode as the cricket yeah oh i liked that i liked that i <gasps> Oh, I didn't mention this. I love that they made up because I didn't think that they were going to see each other again. And they made up and he's just like, I'm sorry for killing you. And he's just like, thank you. And I was sitting there, I was like, this is so sweet. <laughs> our, our emotional senses have been so warped by everything. I know. Um, yeah, I feel like the, the stuff I've said and throughout the reviews just to maybe not justify getting that low but honestly i don't know bernard, i know it's not a good so. reviewing strategy oh but bernard bernard okay back up to three and point, edwin 3.8 3.8 i'll edwin. give it only up point one i that was up by point three. Oh, never mind i thought you had 3.7 before then i switched so, it to yeah 5, good no, good episode maybe not the strongest of episodes but it was it was pretty good yeah Okay, so, time for our mistaken for good now. So we'll turn... Mistaken for good. Yeah, so we'll turn y'all over to that right now. And we're back. So... Well, hello. I didn't see you there. No, that probably would have made more sense if this was the beginning of an episode, not halfway probably, through. Probably, but I didn't want to do that. So, now, episode 707, Mistaken for Good. This is... This is probably the most recent review that we've done for an episode, like the most recent episode we've reviewed that we're not reviewing, like as it comes out for the first time. Yeah. Uh, written by Bob Hoos. What happens, Victoria? Our first review ever was Groundhog J. Um, so, Wait, what? in this episode. Oh, you what? mean with Austin and Tasha? Yeah, and our second yeah. one was The Riddle. Um,. What, what's what's her name? Uh, no, our first one was The Labyrinth. Oh, right, yeah, The Labyrinth. Sorry. What's whose name? Mrs. Kramer uh, well, or Mrs. Wilson? Miss Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. So in this episode, 
Jay uh, ends up at a retirement home, not going there, <laughs> visiting, dropping stuff off. Sorry. <laughs> and so he meets a woman named Miss Wilson who thinks that Jay is her grandson, Humphrey. So she grows uh, very attached to Jay and offers him money for the birthday that she, all the birthdays that she's missed. And so then Vance finds out about this and he kind of turns into a scam. They visit her and bring her stuff under the guise of Humphrey and his friend Teddy. Uh, and in return, Miss Wilson gives them cash money. Making it rain. Make it rain. And they, uh, Jay feels bad about this, but they're too deep in. Vance won't let him get out of it now. Or else they're in too deep. They're in too deep. Uh, or else he'll tell everyone and Jay will get in trouble and he'll make sure Jay takes the fall for it. As always. So, what? I said as always. Yeah, as always. Oh, Vance. Um, so Jay feels really, really bad and he tries telling Mrs. Wilson, but that doesn't go anywhere. So he gets her a music box, and he uh, Olivia gets involved, and Miss Kramer gets involved, and Wit gets involved, and then everyone finds out what happened, and in the end, Jay sends her cards every now and then just to say, like, hi, and know that she's he's thinking about her, but he's not allowed going back to the retirement home until he goes there, which I'm sorry if I made you think he was going there in the first place. I mean, I know the ages in Odyssey are weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know his voice actor's named Wit, but... It would be a bit of a stretch. <laughs> the character isn't that old. So, uh, right off the bat, so Jay shows up at Wit's end, and he has a bunch of stuff he needs to bring to the retirement home. And his line about planning to do nothing, and it's his nothing, is always one of the most relatable lines in this entire show. Like, I, I always know, say that right? same thing. It's not that I'm planning to... It's not that I'm not planning to do anything, it's that I'm planning to do nothing. It's a very yeah. important distinction that I never knew how to put into words before I heard this episode. Yeah, it's like, it's my nothing, and I'll do what I want with it. And I was like, yes, you go, Jay. Yeah, it's important, important stuff. Yeah, that's the real Sir lesson Jay's here. House. What? I said, that's the real lesson here. Yeah, end of episode. So it's nice to hear an episode again where Mrs. Kramer isn't awful. I know this is the last one before she is awful, though. Which yeah, I think you were she was a little. She was kind of awful in the past, but not as much she, so. And I should point yeah. out that our none of our album fifty nine reviews will have come out yet as of the point that this one comes out. So we can't talk about this episodes yet. Ah, oh, darn it! I I think you were saying that this was before. This was the breaking point for her, in your opinion, or something like that. <clears throat> well, yeah, because she basically says that at the end. When she finds out what Jay did, and she's like, well, thanks, kid, there goes my faith in humanity. Because before, she's like, oh, my heart was all soft. I opened myself up to love for the first time in my life. And he does that stuff. I love how she has a Jersey accent now. I wouldn't say this is a Jersey accent. but you, you, I opened myself up to love. But then at the end, yeah, and then Jay turned out but to I be like... I thought she like, was just talking about exclusively young people. I can see you... Uh, what you're saying that like she grew hard hearted after that, but she literally like but, she says that explicitly. Yeah, I know, She's but like, well, what there I goes think my was... faith in humanity. I'm watching you, Jay. Always watching. That's basically her for the entire first half of this episode because she's she's even at the receptionist desk basically. So like, um, I'm not trying to put any blame on here, but what I think happened with this Kramer is the writers got a little bit out of hand with their character, and it just kind of escalated. <laughs> that's more likely, yeah. And that's my personal take on what happened. I'm not trying to diss any of the writers, but that's my opinion. Yeah. So, um, so Jamie... And now she's just the worst human being ever. Yeah. Like, she's worse than... Okay, no, she's not worse than Chloe from Miraculous Ladybug, because no one's worse than Chloe from Miraculous Ladybug, but she's still pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, so Jay meets Mrs. Wilson, and she thinks he's Humphrey, and so she starts giving him money. I, I love the line where she's like, a dollar for every year. That's our tradition. <laughs> How old are you now? Fifty. <laughs> the way that he says it is so funny. Just, um, I love how, like... 
I, I just love hearing Wit voice act Jay. He does such a good job. Just the way his inflections and everything, it creates such a vivid imagery of everything Jay is doing in your head. Like you can tell like his eyes are like bulging. You can, at that you can see the facial can, expressions he's making. Yeah. You and can it, see like how expressive he makes Jay and just the way he voice acts him. And it's so impressive and you can kind of hear like the inflections as he moves his hands I, and stuff. I also and... feel like the inflections that he gives on lots of stuff also kind of lend imagery to what's going on in Jay's mind in terms of the way he's moving back yeah. and forth in terms Yeah, he's of, always like, like he makes his voice go high when he's thinking thinking through things. But I mean and in I terms of like between good or bad, like the way when he's deciding yeah. over moral stuff, like I feel like you can hear it in his voice in the way that it's inflected and it's it's very yeah, and good. you can you can tell when he's thinking and leaning to more more towards one thing. Where he's just like, yeah, we're gonna do this, like, and then sometimes he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I don't uh, 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 uh. bipolar J twenty K fifteen. I I didn't mean to say it that time, darn it. <laughs> I thought you did that on purpose. You could have no. gone away with it. I uh darn it. <laughs> uh, so I mean. I'll talk about Jay and Vance now and Jay's character overall and lots of the stuff is stuff that we said before and I'm sure you'll interject with even more stuff to say about it than I have. I have so much stuff to say. So the, the thing that's really great about this episode is that Jay has been around for five albums at this point. He had already been in 17 episodes before this and he's always already been this really interesting character because when the oh show was... Oh my gosh, Jay. Sorry? Oh my gosh, I love Jay. When the show was rebooted in 2008, although rebooting is really not a good phrase, it's more like refreshed is what they did with the second hiatus. So when that happened, Rodney Rathbone was finally allowed to die in peace and his ghost could move on to another world after 20... Die at 16 years old. After almost 20 after years, yeah. 16 for 60 years. Uh, and his character was split and distilled into two new characters. His truly malevolent side, the one that physically hurt people and extorted them, and went to prison during both... And has a gang. Yeah, and went to prison during both the Blackheart and Novacom sagas. That side became Vance King. And the goofier, less threatening, and more just kind of irritating tease, that side became Jay Smouse. Oh, you tease, Jay. Right at the beginning of the second refresh, uh, we saw both of them, Jay and Vance, together Their in... Their first episode was Jerk of the Week, right? Target of the Week. Or not Jerk of the Week. <laughs> yeah, you're the Jerk, Jerk, Jerk of the Week. It's a jerk and you're, you're, you're a jerk and it's your week. You really outdone yourself. Like a crazy super jerk. That's Vance every week. You're probably a big jerk every week. But this week, you're the jerk of the week. Do, 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 do. I love that song. So, right at the beginning of 51, <laughs> we saw both of them together in Target of the Week, where Vance was a bully and Jay was just his sidekick. And their characters were only incidental However, in the episode, two, I remember the first time I heard Jay. Like I imagined him like a slimy little sniveling, like Igor, star screen kind sniveling of sniveling thing, and yeah. I'm just like, oh my gosh, he's so slimy and sleazy. I hate him so much. And then like, well, yeah, because you picture him as like the Igor kind of. Yeah, I did picture him as that. I think it. Well, like, that's what they made him out to be in the first episode. Fifty two happened right after that, and I was just like, Jay. Oh. Anyways. Their characters in this episode were only incidental to Matthew and Nelson. And then, apart from Vance's Jay-less appearance in the owl napping, Jay was the only one of them to appear ever for the next five albums up until this episode. So this was the first time that they have starred in an episode together where they are the forefront characters. It was mm -hmm. mistaken for good. Jay is the most interesting in the modern era characters, in my opinion. He's evolved so much so quickly from the tiny little bits of Rodney that he was I founded was right. on. right! I'm never going to get over how right yeah, I yeah, was I about Jay. He's... I pegged every single thing about Jay for years and years and years, and I waited for your spirit to be confirmed, and it was. I'm still so proud because you didn't believe me. Yes, I did. Uh, I always well, said were, I thought you were right. about some of the things, though. So, Jay, had, like, he changed so much from the, the foundations of what his character was supposed to be. He's more often an anti-hero than an antagonist, and when things get serious, his instinct is always to team up with the good guys. He's a genuinely eccentric and talented individual with a whole bunch of weird and mysterious backstory and allusions that he makes to things about reciting Shakespeare with a bowling ball on his head, etc. However, there... his parents to show up. We always get... We get so many mentions of his parents, like probably yeah. more for his parents than any other kid, and they still haven't shown up yet, and I really want his parents to show up. 
However, there are other times when he is the antagonist, and he does indeed work quite hard to make life moderately difficult for other kids, particularly Barrett. Up until now, like up until Mistaken for Good, it's been weird and a little inconsistent because Jay seems to usually, most of the time, he's like this eccentric, flamboyant, witty individual who's a little shy of nice. Witty. Uh... He's a little shy of nice, but he has rare bouts of being quite mean, too, on the other side. So it's like, it's kind of... He kind of just rolls with whatever, and he does what suits him best. It's this kind of weird thing. So finally, this episode focuses on the dynamic between Vance and Jay, and shows how Vance is this catalyst for Jay taking his mischievous moments and unwillingly blowing them into full-on schemes. Because Jay is willing to take a little money from an old lady if she's the one already offering and stuff, but he didn't really want to go farther than that. But Vance is the one who pressed him into places that he didn't want to go. And we see this recur more and more from this point on, like in Groundhog Jay when Vance pressured Jay into stealing the kid's bike. Yes? Can I just say, like... Jay, first time we see him, like we already said, he's like slimy individual. I think the first per- first time we ever got like some really, like at least a clue of something about Jay that we didn't otherwise know. Like there are characters where you're like, oh yeah, they're like this and this, but you can't actually name anything about like what they think about or what they care about interest wise was the one with Barrett and his cousin. Like, that was the first time we heard about, like, the Elvis thing, and we're like, oh, there's actually, like, a character beyond the weird stereotype of what Jay is. He, like... There was stuff before that, surely. Yeah, but there wasn't really that much stuff. Like, this was the first big thing we got. Like, oh, he's interested in Elvis, and then we get this one, and it's just like, oh, he doesn't want to do all these things. He has, like, a really big heart, and like you said, this episode was a turning point for his characterization. This was the point where we started delving into more of what his dynamic is between him and Vance. And then the episode that centers around Jay that we got after this, one album later, is Groundhog Jay. And in that one, Vance isn't in the episode at all, but again, he is the catalyst for everything that happens. And we kind of get a lot on Vance and Jay's relationship that wasn't completely touched on earlier, but kind of like rehashed lots of stuff and themes when he was talking to Priscilla, which is really important to me, bro TP. Um, and then, like, we, and so, like, this episode and Groundhog Jay, these episodes gave me faith in my theory that I was right about Jay being a really good person deep down. He doesn't want to do all this stuff. And then, by the time, but then he kind of started, like, getting kind of weird characterization. It kind of started not completely receding, because we did get some elements still of, like, him and Vance and their relationship. But it was kind of more along the lines of his beginning episodes when we didn't really get that much on him. It was more kind of random stuff. So we started getting that for a while. And then just we got the episode with Riley. Riley, rest in peace. We were talking about Riley yesterday. (laughs) Um, And so then you're like, yes, you can finally move on. But then they got rid of Riley. So now we can't do that. And he does have a friend now, which is nice, but... Still, he's starting to become a bad influence and influence on his friend. But uh, the episode that made me lose all faith was 30 J's. But at the end of that episode, I gained my faith again because everything came full circle and everything paid off in the end and it was all worth it. And there's the best J's mouse scene ever of all time. At the end of 30 Jays Hat September, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it now. It'll be worth your it'll be worth it if you care about Jay. If you don't care about Jay, it'll be worth it still, because it's just so well written. And it's so important to me. And this episode gave me faith. So that's the reason I was so upset in the 30 Jays Hat September review. It's because of this episode. I should have got Jesse Morales to listen to this episode, then she could have found her faith really quick. Yeah. So uh yeah, back to what I was saying. <laughs> good, good stuff, I'm, Victoria. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. This is funny. I'm, I'm so emotional. Well, I, I knew Jay's you were going to have a whole bunch of stuff to get out about Jay. I, I have so it. many things to say. That was only I just my beginning. didn't know when it would come out. So anyways, back to... Um... It hasn't come out yet. That was just more of a... <laughs> You're like, oh no. Back to what I was saying. So up until this point, it's kind of weird with Jay because we're only seeing like the final 
effect of everything going on inside of him. We just see like these weird kind of bizarre inconsistent patterns from him. So this is the episode that finally pulled back the curtain on his character and showed how this dichotomy, which previously seemed like mildly inconsistent characterization, was actually a very long drawn out character interaction reveal of the way that Vance was negatively influencing Jay and pressuring him into doing these things sometimes, and that Jay was genuinely trying to escape from this toxic relationship with Vance. Even if it doesn't seem like it sometimes. Um, because if Jay says no to Vance, he's probably going to get like the crap kicked out of him like Buck did in the park. Yeah, you don't want to get so, on Vance's bad side. It's going to end really badly. Um... I just realized that this episode is sort of like the anti-encounter with Mrs. Hooper. Because in that one, it's like Donna's trying to help, but... This Mrs. episode does remind me of... Mrs. Hooper is all like, grouchy, and ah, I hate everyone. And then this is the one where it's like, oh, Mrs. Wilson's so sweet. But then, like, Vance and Jay are scamming her out of stuff. I feel like this episode is, uh, I guess, maybe more emotional than this one is. They're both good, but I think I feel for this episode more, even though, obviously, Donna's bonding over Karen's death was a great moment. And, like, all this stuff with Mrs. Hooper's daughter is tear-jerking. But, but it's very like I'm, I'm still so emotional about the end of this episode. This episode makes this episode is very tear jerking. Also, with like the music box, and I always get so choked up when I listen to the music box scene when she gets it and she starts crying. I know, and, and she gets oh all choked God. up, and then you get choked up. Um, I love when she starts talking about the flat tire earrings and stuff because it's so great. Because I feel like it's just it's really real, you know. Like the the concept of them, like it's really unconventional and quirky in a but way that's that the kind of thing that you get in real life. Exactly, like, something really weird. It's like it's weird, but it was memorable, and it was it's, something that we shared. Yeah, with it's each not other. a romantic and... cliche. It's not like oh, I got you heart earrings. It's like it's an inside joke based on the yeah. really awkward way in which we met, which isn't you know like a romantic cliche or really like normal stuff but yeah it's really realistic and it adds so much of an extra adorability factor because of one how incredibly dorky it is that he did that and two like exponentially multiply because of how old they are now and how old, long ago that would have been mm -hmm. and it's like oh they're so old but they're all adorable and <laughs> they're all so cute he was such um, a nerd getting her flat tire earrings it's so can cute I, can i just kind of <laughs> Can I just kind of lower the tone a little bit, be mean, and say, like, it's really sad because you can tell that she kind of has um, Alzheimer's. Yeah. And just the, or the line like where it's just like, oh, how did you, was it yellow? Yes. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, how did you know I love yellow? And Jay's like, oh, I'm smart like that. And just the way he says that line, just like sticks a dagger in my heart every single time because you can tell oh, like how check, upset check. he is at the moment but he's trying to like lighten the mood and wit is such a good voice actor okay oh. you're back okay i lost you for like 15 seconds there okay i was talking about um, the yellow and the, the stuff yeah I was talking about Jay's inflection when he's just like... I, yeah, I guess that, yeah. Wit is such a good voice actor, though, Devin. Oh, I love his voice acting for Jay so much. I want Jay to stay on the show for a really, really long time. If, if they do a, like, total kids reboot, which they do every kind of, like, 10-ish albums, and they get rid of Jay, I'm going to be so upset because it looks like they've already gotten rid of Priscilla. Barrett hasn't appeared in a long time. We haven't gotten Matthew uh, in They do it every 20 albums, I guess. 25 albums. And I just need Jay to stick around for a really, really long time. And I need Brandon to come back because I want Jay and Jared to hang out because that would be the most amazing thing ever. Speaking of Jay and Jared, we got a shout out to Jay and Jay Antiques, which is cool. Yay. Um, get it? Because Jay and Jared are also yeah, Jay I, and I, Jay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Uh... Um, I, I really love how Jay was willing to sink the entire ship and bring do bring down both Vance and himself just to ensure that Mrs. Wilson would stop being extorted. Mm -hmm. Like, greater love hath no man than he that lay down his not being in trouble to save a friend who is getting ripped off. It's so sweet. Everything about this episode is so sweet, and it tugs on so many heartstrings. Yeah. And I just love, like, 
how emotional it is and how intense everything is. And then in the middle of it, just like when the track goes to track three and it just has like a kind of like bouncy intro right after the whole like Jay and Vance confrontation. And you're like, wait, what? And then it, you hear like school girl and Olivia's like Sailor Moon, like toast in her mouth. She's like, I'm late, I'm late. And then like a cat runs by or whatever. And then Jay like pops out of her locker and he's just like, has anyone followed you? And she's like, what the heck? And then he's like, I'll be the one in the bush. Can't talk now. Like, Gotta be on my way to be a sailor scout. So, but my question is, if Jay was wearing an eye patch, they never said... I don't think if he they, took it off? <laughs> they gave any indication whether he took it off or not. Good so point. For, for all we know, he could be like, during like, while well, everyone's crying, he could just be standing there wearing an eye patch. Have you ever thought about that before? I hadn't thought about it, no. I, I think about these things. I can tell. Um... Another shout out to Whit being a teacher. It's always Heck good. Yeah. Callbacks. It was cool. I love how it's just like, oh man, things are getting intense. Open the door. Whit's there. Hi everyone. It's like, of course you're here. I I think it's cool how there was that shout out not to just Whit being a teacher, but the fact that like Mrs. Wilson also used to be a teacher and they taught together. I like how they kind of gave a shout out to how Whit does and like frequently visit retirement homes to talk to people. He does um, love the youngsters, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember what I was talking about. There was something... I can't remember what it was. There was something uh, talking about how young Wit was or something like... Or how young someone was. And I'm like, yeah, Wit, because you're so young or something. Like, I can't remember what it was. But... Um, I never noticed before that Mrs. Kramer starts crying when Jay gives Mrs. Wilson the music box. Are you serious? Yeah. I never noticed it. Everyone starts crying except for Did, Are you Jay. asking if I was serious that I never noticed that or that that happens? Yeah. No, no, I'm asking if you never noticed that. No. Because she's like sniffling and she's like, oh, that... that well, because everyone was crying. Part. I didn't notice that she... I never picked her out specifically of that before. Yeah, they're they're all crying except for the guys. The, the men. Uh, testosterone. Mm. Uh, I, I'm so happy with the end that someone, Wit, actually found out that Jay was trying to help. Because I always get so frustrated with a glass you, darkly when Trent gets in trouble for literally saving Dr. Hawthorne's I life. I hate that episode so and much. And no one ever finds out. He saved his life. He would have died. And nobody ever found out. Not Trent, not Dr. Hawthorne. Nobody. It makes, I get I get why they did it, but it makes me mad. And it I'm does. really glad that Wit was able to know that Jay was actually like resisting against Vance and perfect, purposefully exposed the scam so that it would stop happening. And then we found out about that. It makes me so happy. And the episode, I understand why it ended the way it did, but the ending still makes me really sad. I mean, like, it's a realistic card, ending. And it's like, oh. It's a realistic ending, and I love that he still sends her letters because that's so adorable. But or at I'm, least the one card, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sad that he can't visit her anymore. Uh, sad. I mean, like, Unless he Wait, snuck between bushes and then, like, rolled through the window. Couldn't they do, like, a thing where, like, he still visits her, but, but he has supervised? to be under supervision? That Can should be able they... to work. Maybe yeah. it's just because they're, like, we don't have the resources to, to supervise someone. No, just I mean, like, this, maybe but... he could arrange a thing with Wit. Like, I bet Wit would be willing to go. Probably. And, like, they could visit her at the same time because they both do Maybe that her. happened. Maybe we can believe that that's a thing that did happen I'd in I'd like future. to think that happened. Sure. That's, is, that's the okay, beauty of headcanons, Jay, Victoria. Jay is such Done. a sweetheart. Like, he has his pen pal. <laughs> Hopefully you're part of the percentage that can read. I'm never going to get over that line. That's a great line. Um, and she, like, visits Mrs. Wilson, and I like Olivia in this episode. It's not like, um, like, she, she serves a good purpose in this episode. She's not there just because, like, she actually does stuff. It's not like one of those MLP episodes where it's just like, oh, we need to shoehorn this character in so they can learn a lesson, or they can just be here conveniently and then just not really do anything, basically, which when they have all the main characters, they usually do. Yeah. Like, they usually don't need to be there. But Olivia actually served a purpose in this episode. She got, like, the music box and stuff, and she was in the beginning, too, and I like that. This episode doesn't have very many characters in it. No, it doesn't. Well, there's a couple. Uh, let's talk about Vance. 
Vance King. Vance King. <sighs> I mean, we just talked about Vance a bunch, but... Just... Uh, Vance! So... Vance is a really interesting character in that he's he's not really, I'd say, character foil to Jay because, or I guess maybe he is in a way, but not like a conventional character foil. What what do you think? Sort of, is it, maybe. A character foil is supposed to be a character that you uh, brings out different aspects of your personality. Yeah, so they Vance, juxtapose with your own. Yeah. So, like, a perfect example of this is Eugene Dwayne and, and Jared. Yes. What? I said Eugene and everybody. Yeah. From that one thing. Um, but, like, I don't know. It's, I wouldn't really call Vance a complete character foil because he only brings out the bad sides of Jay. I mean, some people could argue that he also brings out the good sides of Jay, like especially in this episode when Jay makes. Well, foil right doesn't have to bring out all the sides of a character; they just bring out yeah. different stuff than they would so, otherwise. I think Priscilla would be a better character foil for Jay. Well, I think they both are. They just bring out different sides of him. Is the point? Yeah. So, and I guess Barrett's one too, um, but. Uh, I feel like it's more specific than that. The definition, though, maybe I don't know. It is. But... Raise your hand if Ants King makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've been victimized <laughs> you've been by victimized by Vance King. Yeah. Raise your hand if you've been personally victimized between the confusion of Vance King and Vince King. <laughs> so. Shout out to Mean Girls. Shout out to Mean Girls, even though people haven't heard, people don't know who Vince King is yet. Yeah, Victoria <laughs> Bad. Shame on you. Shame. This is the second time I've got you. Darn it. You have to watch out, or else I'll keep on tricking you. It is um, that time of year. Imagine how different Jay would be if Vance wasn't a character. Well, sounds like a Room of Consequence episode to me. It. Can we do that, actually? Can we, we can do whatever we want, Victoria. I, I want there to be a Room of Consequence episode where Jay finally realizes, like... I think he has. I, I know. I, I don't want to use the word realize because I know he has realized it. But, like, one where he sees, like, if he keeps on going down the road he's going down, like, what's going to happen? But, like, I want it to show him two different roads. Like, one road where it's just, like... And both of them to... lead to hell. Unless yeah. that's what we're One where he chooses to do good things, and one Shout where he chooses to, to do, like, bad things. Can I just say, I want... Like, I would probably cry if they developed Jay to a point where he became a Christian. Like, I would cry. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee I would cry if that happened. I would be so happy. What, what do you think? Yeah, it would be like really emotional. Like that would be that would be so emotional. Oh my gosh, I need it to happen. I don't want them to pull a Lawrence and do it off screen. Yeah, it I, would be it would I be like a character development that. thing, not as big as Kanye and Eugene, but approaching the same scale. I feel like it would be a lot like a mix between Kanye and Eugene's. Well, I mean, I but like he it's... hasn't had as much... Like, Kanye and Gene both had lots of episodes where they explicitly talked about, like, spiritual development and stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, in Mistaken for Good and in 30 J South September, they talk about uh, spiritual stuff. Like, he talks about his wit. Yeah. I feel like after 30 J's, there's definitely room for more of that stuff to come in the future for it to be able to build up to the point where it'd be something like Connie's was. Mm -hmm. um, Not Eugene's, Wits but Connie's. and Jay's conversations really, for me, are reminiscent of Jared and Wit's conversations. Like, at the ends of episodes. I don't know if that's just me. I, I can see but, what you mean. But every single time I listen to it, I'm like, oh, this reminds me of this conversation Jared and Wit had in this episode. This one reminds me of the buck stops here. This one reminds me of... The buck stops here is what I thought of when you said that. Yeah, the buck stops here and also um, 
Patrick. What's it called? The one where he pretends to be like a girl and like a uh, spy about he... me. Yeah. No. No. Um. Not. Like a dating help person or whatever. Oh, like. the something clicked between us. Yeah, something clicked between us and the buck stops here are the two big ones I think of every single time like they have a conversation. And also another man's shoes. Like what's the one where it's like no, yeah, the something clicked between us is the big one. Like Jay I could just imagine Jay reciting like biblical stuff and be like oh you have a frog in your own eye or something yeah a hog and a log a log and or spam and hog yeah sorry yeah which is very clever i must say because they they sound similar and they're also connected in their own right because they're both pork i was like (laughs) you're like ah i see what you did there uh uh, yeah we should move into final thoughts on this episode we're a little over time Mm mm-hmm you go first. This is a very good episode. Like I said, it's this. It's basically it is the turning point in Jay's can character just, development. Can I just say, Miss Williams is a complete sweetheart, and she doesn't Wilson. deserve. That's what I said. Is a complete sweetheart, and she doesn't deserve any of the bad stuff she goes through. Cinnamon roll I get too perfect. Williams. Too, too good for this or, what? What did I call her? Williams. Williams and Wilson. Yeah, I get words that start with. M's and words that start with W's mixed up because one's the other one upside down and it doesn't make any sense. All right. And so if I call her something that starts with an M, just ignore it. All right. Yeah. Just disclaimer. Devin's confused. As long as you don't sound like Wisses Milson, I guess. (laughs) Wisses Milson. So... Yeah, uh, this is, I, I guess it's not the turning point in Jay's development, but it's it's the first one where we really actually get a deep look at what's going on in terms of his development and his relationships with other characters, which is huge. Uh, it's a really sweet episode with lots of like really good emotions, which always happens when you have really sweet old people. It happens a lot. Um, Vance doesn't show up very often in this show. I mean, he's showing up more lately, but this is only his third episode at this point. Vance! So it was good to see him and finally understand how his relationship with Jay works. The fact that Jay actually, like, at the end, that this, like, wit found out and that it wasn't like, oh, Jay, run him off forever, a terrible person. I remember the first time I heard that, I was so worried that was going to happen. Yeah, and so I did was I. thinking of A Glass Darkly because Devin and I both hate that episode well, so much. Well, I hate the ending. I hate the ending, too. Um, so, yeah, that's good. You know, tie backs to counter with Mrs. Hooper. <sighs> it's, uh... Yeah, it's a good episode. I'll give it 4.6 out of 5. I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 because it has the bay in it. And he has the probably some of my favorite, I won't say the best character development in Odyssey because I think that spot is reserved exclusively for Eugene. Um, but I will say he has some of the best character development in all of Odyssey. And it's only and, just beginning. Yeah, it's only, like, it is off to a great start. He needs to stay in the show a really long time because he has so much potential. Yeah, he better character. not leave. He better not leave or else I'm going to write letters to the people who make the show. And I'm not kidding about that. I would actually do that. Um, You know I'm not kidding. I know you're not. And um, so... This is kind of like the kickstart. In my opinion, the kickstart for his character development kind of started in the episode with his cousin and Barrett, which I still can't remember the name of. I'm becoming Jay. I'm becoming Jay. No, that's not it, is it? No. No? I think... No, it's, uh... Jay for a day, uh... Which one's I'm becoming Jay? That's... Well, that's what I thought it was, uh... I think that's what it is. Oh, wait, yeah. That's yeah, the end it of is in album 54. Yeah, it is Unbecoming Jay. Yeah. So Unbecoming Jay in my opinion is the kickstart to his character development. But that's kind of like where it's kind of like we've been on a roller coaster and it kind of gets like some zigs and zags every now and then, but you're just like staying on the same plateau. And then like Unbecoming Jay is kind of like where it hits the thing it clicks 
And then like this one is the first kind of like thing where the first cart takes off on like the things that it's being pulled up. And then like Groundhog J, 30 J's House September is just going up and it's never going to fall down, hopefully. So basically you're just describing like a plot diagram, but as a roller coaster. As a roller coaster, yeah. Yeah. So it's we very both good. we both gave our numbers then, right? Yes. Yes, yes we did. Everything All right. in this episode is so good and the music box scene is so emotional. What are we doing next time, Victoria? Uh, it's a discussion. Uh, discussion on different would Odyssey work as a different media style? Well, uh, not would it work, but is it best served where it is, is now? It, is it best as a radio series? Yeah. So we are going... We definitely can rule off it being an animated series. We want to look at different styles of media, like um, graphic novels and books, audio drama, cartoons, live action series, different forms of serialized media, and look at what are the different, the pluses and minuses of different forms and figure out, you know, is audio drama the best way that Odyssey could be delivered? Is this the peak form? Is this its final say... form? Uh, so yeah, we'll talk <laughs> this about... This isn't even my final form. We'll talk about I that. I was going to say, you and me should do a live action show, but I think Adventures in Editing has that beaten and no one no one can beat yes, it. Yes, she does. Plus, there's also the one in India. Yeah. Um, so... That takes place in Hell's Diner. Yeah, Victor's Junction. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, until then, thank you for joining us on Our Side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. And I've been Victoria Francis, and can I just say that Vance is a real son of a tax collector. I forgot about that one. I've been waiting for you to say it for months. I forgot so about that one. Good now. call back to January. I've been waiting every single day for you to use it. <laughs> All right, and good night. Bye.